I finally got some time to get back on the Red Baron cabinet here and as you can see I've laid it sort of on its back at an angle so I can work on this top of the cabinet. Uh, it got most of the water damage, just about all the water damage on the on the top of it here and as you can see in this piece right here which is this is the top marquee bracket and this is uh, part of the open face uh, piece that goes on the front of the battle zone cabinet which turns it into the, the open face of course this was a factory conversion I believe but uh, as you can see right here the particle board got really swollen right on the back side but it, it seems to stop uh, just short of the, the metal bracket here you can you can see where the uh, it's, it's affected un underneath the bottom there. It's kind of hard to see in the video, I guess, but uh, focus in. You can see where it's swelled up on the end, but as it gets towards the uh, metal bracket, it, it goes back to its original size. So we're going to have to address that. Okay, well, right here on this side, we got a pretty good indication of where this blocking goes, uh, either due to the fading of the paint or maybe. Uh, somebody had painted it once the blocking and the, the top was on but what was covered by the wood is darker than than this other part of the cabinet well we know the, the blocking you can see right here uh, almost butts right up to this one here and it's at the same level but it's kind of a peak so it kind of slants down just slightly uh, it's not a, a flat top I could probably make it a flat top and nobody would ever notice, but I might as well go and put it back like it was since I have the indications of where it was. So we know that this is the line for the bottom of the blocking, and as we go up here, we can see where the blocking ended right here. So we'll be able to easily get our measurement here for this blocking. The one on the other side should be identical, or pretty close to identical. Uh, and then we have the same indications here. You can see where the blocking ended and you can see the bottom edge of the blocking where the glue stuck when they pulled the blocking off. And of course, uh, all the way down to where it butts up to, to the blocking here. So we should be able to put this on with no problem. All right, well, we're ready to install our blocking, the last blocking that we need in the cabinet. And we're gonna start on this side here. found out that the length of this is about six and a half inches to go in here. So, put a little glue on here. And we've got our marks marked out for where it goes, so we ought to be able to get it on here. Make sure we've got it lined up. Good. We'll grab a staple gun. Move our 
clamp. Hopefully get a staple up into that end. side okay well I got both sides in so the blocking for the top of the cabinet is finished but I did notice something else uh, while I was stapling this the, the uh, marquee bracket is loose the the screw has come out of the wood blocking so it's stripped out of it and then I hadn't noticed this but on this other side here the blocking is also stripped and is out of that side. So I'm going to have to probably put a new piece of blocking here and maybe even on the other side just hold it in. But it, it sets in a groove so it's, it's not really going anywhere but it just locks it in. I could just go ahead and drill another hole put another bolt in it. But this side here with the blocking split I think I'll go ahead and replace that blocking. So I uh, might as well go ahead and do that now before I put the roof on and make it much easier. Well now we're going to try to remove this piece of blocking here that holds the, uh, the marquee light assembly in. Um, it, this side here is split and the other side the screw had stripped out. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and see if we can't get this off without doing any damage and uh, get this wiring harness out of the way here. Now it's stapled in and glued so uh, this cabinet is like what 34 years old so hopefully the, the, the glue is not going to hold it too much. We're going to try by just tapping on this back side here with a hammer and seeing if we can rock it loose which we did. The only thing basically holding it was the staples. Now we'll take one of these uh, paint scrapers, good hard, thick stainless steel with a chisel edge, and see if we can't put it under here and, and prise up on it, and try to pull them staples out without doing any damage to the wood underneath. Take your time. Use any leverage points you have to your advantage. And there we have it. We took it off, but looks like we also took off a layer of the, um, this is a piece of plywood that it was glued to. So, that's not going to be critical because all this does is, is hold this in place. So we'll just cut us a new block and put it on there and uh, staple it in. Should be good to go. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Well, I cut me a new piece of blocking to go in here. But because I have this uh, edge right here, it's not going to fit flat where the uh, plywood, the top layer, uh, was stuck to the original blocking. So I've decided what I'm going to do is just trim it off. So I'll put the blocking up here in place. Draw me a line. Then I'm going to take a razor knife. Just cut me a line across here. Alright. Now I should be able to just peel this top layer of laminate right off. And 
out a new block and we'll set flush on top of that piece of plywood. Now we can glue it and staple it. Alright, now we're going to put put our glue on. Okay, that should take care of that side. Other side, the blocking looks solid. It just looks like somebody had stripped the screw out. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill a new hole just, just below or above the original hole and just put the screw back in the other side. Uh, I'm not going to put the screws in this piece here. Got a vice grips holding it up here. Uh, because I'm going to wait till I get the top on and, and get it glued and, and stapled in place to make sure the cabinet might have to uh, pull in a, a little bit to meet up with the top. So I don't want these screws and this piece here keeping it from coming together. So we'll do that after we put the top on. Okay, well I got ready to put the top on the cabinet and I found out that this front piece here, where the, this is the marquee bracket, the top marquee bracket, which goes on here, and the, the marquee sits on the front here. This is actually the top of the, the open face unit that goes into the front of the cabinet, uh, which is part of what they call the open face kit, but a standard on Red Baron. What I found out was, this edge right here on this side of the cabinet, the staples had been pulled loose, and you see where the, the wood had, had broke a little bit right here. And it had, when I squeezed the sides back together, the staples bent over, and it was in the wrong place. So I had the correct uh, gap on that side, but this side was pushed back and it, it wasn't even enough room where you could get the marquee in there. And that's, that's why it was, it was off, off square because of that. So I decided to go ahead and pull it loose and this side was already, it came unglued too, but the staples were still in it. But it, it easily pulled right out. You can see where it used to have glue on it right there and it didn't stick. So uh, it also appears that this piece of wood is, may have been a little thicker than three quarters of an inch. It's, actually thicker than this, which this is three quarters of an inch, but not by much. Sixteenth of an inch maybe. So that, that may be due to swelling because it looks like it has got water retention and, and swelled up and we know this side has. Uh, so anyway, we're going to have to reproduce this piece here. So I've already checked and it's, it's still square and it's still the right width so we can we can use that as as our guide and it's just a little bit bigger than the marquee bracket because the marquee bracket has to fit in the edge so that should be fine so we're going to take a piece of wood that was left over from our back door plate um, the, the piece that goes on the back of the cabinet above the back door because it's already cut in the same size that is and I matched it up and it, it appears to be, the, it is the exact same width of this. So we're going to use 
this to make a new one of these. So, because it, it is square, I, I checked it. And uh, that side square. That side square. And use this as a template. So we'll just flip it over. Good. So now we'll just take a pencil and we'll mark the inside curve on the straight edge here. swelled a little bit but it shouldn't matter. Looks like a fairly straight edge. I can straighten it up. Alright, now we got our basic curve that we're going to have to cut. I'll just take this straight edge here. clean straight edge on this. Now, because this is curved, we're going to take our saw and we're going to try to cut this as close as we can. Because what I'm going to try to do is use this piece of wood as the piece on the top that butts up against this because we, we would have to saw a profile to where this piece meets up with this. I thought about I could just leave it one piece since I'm never going to turn this into a battle zone again but uh, I might might lay it on there and try that and, and, and I might just do that. That would make it a dedicated Red Baron. That way I wouldn't have to worry about this cut. All I'd have to do is go back and strike my line for the, the split in the roof and just cut a straight line. Let me go back to the cabinet and see how that lines up. That's, that might be a good idea. Well, I put the piece of wood on the top here and I've decided that um, while it would work if I didn't put the original cut in here to, to make this part of just a front plate, uh, it would work, but I believe I would rather have it so that if I ever needed to remove this uh, front front face plate, that I'd rather have it so it would come apart. So uh, I have this piece that I'm going to have to cut in place like it's supposed to be. The marquee bracket is on here, and I got the the, the marquee in just for a test fit to make sure I got the angle correct and it appears the angle is correct we can take the marquee bracket loose and take the the marquee off put that out of the way now what we need to do is I've taken and made new uh, three-quarter inch blocking to replace the the blocking uh, that staples on the, under here to, to hold this edge up on, on this piece. And as you can see over there, that's, that's where the blocking goes. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since this board is in place and lined up with my blocking that I put in earlier, I need to be able to align this blocking. So I'm, I'm going to put the glue on it, put the blocking in place, and, and put a clamp on it. And then I'm, after it's clamped in place, I'm going to remove the board so I can get my staple gun in there and staple it in place. Okay, now we're going to install the blocking. It goes up under here on both sides. 
we have our board in place the way it's got to sit. So we're going to use it as a guide and the end of the block lines up with the flush with the, the edge of both sides. So what we're going to do is put our glue on the block. put it in place and put a clamp on it. All right, and that clamp is going to hold it in place. We get this side on. Same thing here. And that's going to hold the blocking in place because we want it flush with the bottom of, of this and it's already sitting on the blocks that we put in behind it. So now that we've got that in place, we can go ahead and take these clamps off and very carefully take this board off Now our blocking is in the correct position. So now we're going to staple it to the side of the, uh, the front piece. We're not going to staple it to this because this is sort of sticks over as a guide to help line it up in the sides. So we just want to staple it to this piece right here. So while we got the clamp in place, get our staple gun. We wouldn't have been able to do this with the top on, so that's why we're doing it now. Alright, same thing on this side. I can take the clamps loose. And now we can put our staple up here near the end. So now we've got these blocks in place. Now we can go ahead and take that piece that we had laying on here and cut out the piece that's going to staple onto here. Okay, it's got dark on us again and the crickets are back as you can hear. We're going to try something different, a little bit different. We're going to recreate this piece right here and this was obviously uh, done on a router. The corner here is rounded and uh, because we're going to cut this out of a, a sheet of wood and I want to be able to use the, the piece that we cut from it as the mating piece uh, we're going to just square off these these corners here. And because it's a regular saw will cut a little bit too wide of a gap I'm going to try something different. We're going to try this uh, reciprocating 
saw, or os oscillating saw, I think is what they call it. It's got a wood metal blade on it. Um, I've used this to cut wood before. Um, also used it to cut plexiglass for marquees and stuff, and it usually works pretty good. It's got a fine tooth blade on it. The thing about it is it's got a nice flat blade, so what I'm going to do is I, I put a piece of wood up here to use as a, a straight edge and a fence, and we can put this flat blade because it doesn't spin like a regular saw. It just oscillates back and forth. You can actually put your hand on the blade and it won't cut you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put it up against this and hopefully get a nice square cut and cut right down into it. A nice thin square cut. Now the first cut is just from here to the outer edge. Then we're going to also have to cut this here and then cut across the, the front and the same thing on the other side. So we're going to start right here and just give it a little test and see how it does. After the turn of, of the century in the clear blue skies over Germany came a roar and a thunder and it never heard like the screaming sound of a big walker up in the sky a man there I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off camera and then we'll come back and see what it looks like well we finally got the cut finished and uh, may not be the prettiest cut but I'll straighten it up just a little bit with the sander but at least we achieved what I wanted to do I wanted to have these two pieces to be able to line up uh, this will be the, the front part and this will be the next piece to butt up to it now what I have to do is take and cut this uh, bearing, little stripping right here, so that uh, it will fit on here. And that's basically how it goes. Of course, it doesn't have to fit this piece, it's got to fit this piece. So we'll cut our stripping out of, out of uh, quarter inch plywood. All right, now I'm ready to put this quarter inch plywood fairing with stripping on the underside of this. And the original piece was held in with these wide staples. I guess it's sort of like a postry type staples. Uh, same, looks like might be the same staples that hold the, the uh, T-nuts in, but um, I couldn't find my staple gun. I have one here somewhere, uh, just couldn't find it. So I'm going to use a brad nailer with just short brad nails, and I'm going to glue it anyway, so I think that's all of, that'll be needed. So we're going to try it anyway.
what we want it to do. We want it to be able to sit on this piece here. So uh, that's going to work out good for us. This is the bottom side. We're going to flip it over. And, uh, let's go ahead and flip it over. That's going to be the top, so that, that ought to work out good. So, now we can go ahead and staple this on the cabinet, and then we need to come back and get our measurement for the, to cut this across, and that will be the, the crown or the middle part of the cabinet. All right, while we're at it, decided to go ahead and take these uh, T-nuts out of this original piece and reuse them uh, because it used the Allen head fine thread screws to hold the top marquee rail down. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and thread it into T-nut. I've already removed the staples that was holding it in. Of course, I probably didn't have to do that because this would probably knock the staples out at the same time. Go ahead and put it put it down to where you got all your threads in because you don't want to uh, strip your threads by doing this. And just slightly tap on the head with a hammer, and it should bust it right out. Of course, the particle board is in such bad shape. The particle board is separating, but that's okay because we've already created a replacement here. Hopefully I can reuse these. I don't know. We'll see once we get them out. Yeah, I think I might be able to re reuse them. All right, let's go ahead and get the other two out. Okay, I figured the best way to get this lined up on top of the cabinet was to go ahead and put the marquee bracket on and screw it in place. And I put the marquee on so the marquee is, is flat so I was able to line up the, uh, the marquee bracket even with the, the marquee plexi. And once I had it in place I, I put this clamp on it to squeeze the sides of the cabinet together to hold it in place. So then I went ahead and I took my piece that's going to uh, butt up in here. I put it on here. I marked where the back cut is going to have to go. And when I put it in place, I drew a line across uh, to where I got to make the cut. So now we're going to take this piece here to the saw and we're going to make the cut. Come back and make sure it lines up. And then we'll be ready for some glue and staples. All right, we're going to make this cut on the table saw. I set up the, the fence here so I can run it along the fence, sort of like we're doing a rip. Let's give it a try. <laughs>
got that piece cut. All right, well, we got everything cut and lined up. So now we're going to loosen this clamp because we're ready to put the glue and staple it. Staple it to these blocks on either side up, up, up to here. So, not much to staple on this part. And we're also going to put glue on that top edge. back in place. Make sure our marquee is flat on the blocking. Flat on the blocking. And we are. Yeah, the marquee looks good. Now, before I staple that, this piece in, make sure this lines up. That, does, that lines up. Okay, so let's put some staples in. staple no deeper than this. We don't want to staple to this because this piece is going to be removable. Okay. Well, that's good until we get this piece in. Then I'll remove the marquee retainer and we'll put a couple more staples in underneath the retainer. Let's go ahead and put our glue down.
we're going to put this about middle way to squeeze the sides in tight. Good. My staple gun. and we'll pull our marquee railing off. Finish up our staples. Now we'll go ahead and let the glue dry. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll cut this last piece and the top will be finished. Okay, well I've got the last piece of the roof ready to go in. 
I went ahead and cut a, another piece to fit and I put a piece of quarter inch plywood glued and uh, put brad nails in it to hold it in. This is just going to be a little lip to give the joint here a little extra strength. And it'll go in like this. And then all I got to do is glue it and nail it in place. I've also put uh, three eight lines here so I'll know where to put my staples on, on the back wall here. Um, uh, I got the, the, this is where the blocking is and this is where the, the back particle board is so I don't know if I'm just going to put staples in the, in the blocking. I don't know if I'll put them in the particle board yet or not. We'll wait and see. But uh, it looks like it's going to be a good tight fit here. So we'll go ahead and get the glue and the staple gun out and get ready to put this on. Alright, gonna apply glue. Put a little glue on the lip of this plywood. Staple gun here. One staple in to hold it. And this probably isn't necessary, but I'm going to put one clamp on it here. Finish our staples.
I think I'm going to put any in the particle board. The glue ought to, ought to glue that together. And that should be it. All right, now let's let that dry. Then we'll come back and put some uh, primer on here. I think I'm going to use Kills oil-based primer and uh, maybe put put a coat on it, see what it looks like. Maybe two coats. I don't know. It depends on how much the wood soaks up. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll put some semi-gloss black on it. And then the basic structure of the cabinet will be done. Um, then we can go back inside the cabinet and do a little cleanup. Uh, try to clean the inside up a little bit. Take the uh, power transformer assembly, the, uh, the block out, and go through it, recondition it. And got the parts in yesterday for the joystick. So uh, we'll be doing a video on rebuilding the joystick shortly. So I'll probably end this video right here. It's already going to be long enough. And I'll make another video on the prep for painting the wood. And then I'll probably have a separate video for the joystick. And we'll just see how it goes. Uh, so uh, we're on our way to a, a working Red Baron. Just a little more work.